It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, July 12th, your daily dose of Flyers news analysis and high quality content that is so happy we get to talk about skaters on the ice. That's why I love Dev Camp. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with the brilliant Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. That's where you'll keep up to date on all our episodes, Flyers News. You can also email us at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. We've got a mailbag segment coming up on tomorrow's show. So get those questions in. On today's show, we are going to talk about the latest Flyers news on who they gave qualifying offers to and who they didn't. We're going to talk more about development camp and get into free agency, which is kicking off tomorrow. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening right now. So hit that subscribe button. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, you can watch us over on YouTube. All right. So we did learn yesterday that uh, the Tony D'Angelo contract is official. It's exactly what we thought it was. Two years at five million per. So that's kind of where we're at on that front. But I think the bigger news was that qualifying offers were due and uh, some interesting decisions from the Flyers, though not completely unexpected. So we had qualified offers given to Wade Allison, Jackson Cates, Hayden Hodgson, Linus Hogberg, Tanner Lazinski, Zach McEwen, Isaac Ratcliffe, and Owen Tippett. But most importantly, Morgan Frost. So, yeah, the Frost one should get done. Um, that's what I'm hearing. I'd be shocked if it was anything else. It's nice that Wade Allison's getting it. I hope he can stay healthy. But if he can't, it's probably the last one he gets. I would think so as well. And, you know, a bunch of these guys obviously are either destined for Lehigh Valley or at least will start there. So I expect them to be pretty easy contracts to get done. I got to say, um, Owen Tippett, I'm very curious where that one lands. That one Uh, worries me, like you said. Yeah. Maybe they go a little higher than we think they should. Yeah, I am a little worried that that is going to eat up a little bit more than your basic minimum level of cap space. But who knows? Maybe they think he needs some time to cook and they'll give him the minimum and he'll take it, you know, knowing that he could renegotiate again uh, later on. But uh, yeah, I am a little nervous about that one in particular. Um, I am very curious what Zach McEwen's offer is going to be as well. Um, Just because I know management likes him a lot, um, I don't think he contributes a ton. So I'm hoping it's again sort of at that lower minimum level. Here you go, Zach. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think he's perfectly good as a as a fourth liner when Mm -hmm. they need him. But um, I wouldn't want him to be counted on for anything beyond that. Um, All these guys have until Wednesday to accept, so we'll get more news on that tomorrow. Uh, They did not give qualifying offers to Matt Strom, Maxim Sushko, or Kirill Ustamenko. And Sushko, we pretty much knew, was gone. He's already signed over in Russia. Uh, Matt Strom is a little bittersweet for me. I think that, you know, he was definitely somebody that was going to have to overcome really bad skating in order to Mm -hmm. make it. And I don't think he got there, but I think he improved a lot this past season in his gameplay. And I certainly hope he's open to an offer for an AHL contract with the Phantoms, but he will get UFA status. So he's free to do whatever he wants at at this point, but I at least hope the Phantoms give him an offer. So you're expecting teams to line up for him. Are you? AHL teams, maybe. Yeah. 
I can see that. And and he may just decide my time here is done and go play somewhere else, which is sure. perfectly reasonable for, for him to do. Listen, go uh, play for Palm Springs. That's where I, if I were an AHL player, <laughs> that's where I'm heading. Exactly. Kirill Istomenko, I think this kind of makes sense. I think that they're expecting Sam Erson to fill that role yes. in the organization this upcoming year. And again, I think that makes perfect sense. So maybe, you know, it's just kind of time w- well, with him. Instead of having Ustamenko at dev camp, they had a dummy goaltender who was basically in this butterfly, setting the butterfly the whole time, which you kind of feel bad for because it's like nobody wants to be in the butterfly the entire time, but this guy is. Speaking of development camp, uh, Bobby Brink was not there, and that was due to injury. Uh, he may be having surgery on his hip. Uh, which is not great, I got to say. Again, I talked about him being injury prone, like on the ice. He's missed a fair amount of games in his short career already. And now this means another non-full season. It's not what you want to see. No, that's for sure. But uh, I think it'll give some other guys some opportunities to to show what they can do and, and sure. maybe move up the depth chart with the flyers uh, because that's kind of what we're going to be focused on this season is a lot of the, the prospects. Um, Adam Yinning isn't there because he doesn't have a visa. Brian Zanetti is playing with the Swiss national team. So he wasn't there either. So uh, th- that's why those particular prospects weren't at dev camp, but you were at dev camp, Russ. Uh, tell mm-hmm. me what you saw. So, you know, first fun thing to see is, um, Devin Kaplan and uh, Cutter Gauche working together with their passing and such. I mean, in a way, you almost want to see them broken up because they're teammates, like they know how to do this together. But maybe day one, I'm okay with it. I really hope they don't roll roll through the whole camp without them sort of switching up partners. I think they should. But it was fun to see that for today. That was nice. Um, You know, I didn't love Tyson Forster skating. There's a part where they um, they kind of skate do a turn take a shot his edge work still needs work hmm. i'm I'm gonna say that um hunter mcdonald has an issue that i noticed when they were sort of like in a circle and you were getting someone on the left passing to you and then you were passing to the next person yeah right someone on someone on your right passes to you you pass to you on your left so when he was receiving it and then when he was passing it sort of like the weight distribution on his hips wasn't really smooth. Could be better. So hopefully that's, these are kinds of things that, you know, you hope the team can, um, can fix in a dev camp. That's why you have a dev camp. Um, Owen McLaughlin's edge work was great. His cuts were. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. His cuts were really improved when he had to, you know, do like a half circle or whatever. He, he was really good. The best skater there still is Elliot Denoyer by a, a long shot, I think. I would expect that. Yeah. That's just always the first thing you notice with him. Yeah. Um, on the defensive side, which again, didn't get as much work today. It was more direction. Um, but what I did catch, uh, Mason Millman and Ethan Sampson, I thought worked well together from a passing perspective. And so that was that was good to see. They worked on guys' first passes. And um, I thought Wyatt Wiley looked good on that. And so did Samson. So there's that. And then I took a video. Um, we can put up the link later on my Instagram for Cutter Gauthier, just doing his one timer thing. And it's it's amazing and one. It's a great one timer. Yeah, I love watching that video, and it does get you really excited for his potential because sure. I think there's just not been like flyers that have done that i mean Giroux did that i mean he was kind of famous for his one timer uh uh, on the team but it's just good to have somebody coming up the ranks who likes to do that sort of thing yeah (laughs) so like ty mcsorley you know marty's nephew eh, Mm -hmm. don't see much there um chase primo keith's son who i who i had watched years ago in the ushl Mm -hmm. is now 24 which is outrageous to me. Um, his two-step quickness is not great. Now, back in the day with Keith Primo, that was fine. 
because the league wasn't where it is now. So I don't know what that means for his future. Still doesn't mean they couldn't sign him to an AHL deal. I mean, you know, that's fine. Brzezinski looks good. Um, he's another one who's improved on his skating. And you saw his brother play for the Rangers this year. Yep. He's got he's got another year of college, but um, those Brzezinski brothers at least work hard. There's a lot of mixed feelings about Gavin Hain. I am not dismissing him. Gavin Hain looked good. His shot looks good. His skating looks good. He's calm, confident, and he um, he's gained some muscle. And to me, that's that's a big thing. That's something that was he at North Dakota. That's something North Dakota could definitely help a player with. Mm -hmm. I I don't know why people are, are dismissive. You know, like some of the media maybe are maybe they haven't seen enough of him. He's not an offensive player, but he could be uh, one of those centers that just does a little bit of everything. And you know, he's not going to be on the top three. He'd be a fourth line right. guy, right? But again. You know, he does have a, a history of playing with the NTDP. You know, I'd like to see what he puts up this year. He had nine points in 18 games last year. You know, if he can have a strong senior year there, I think about it because I'm just, all I'm looking at is from like a fourth line perspective. Right. Well, and that's great to have the luxury of that one more year to see how he does. And, yeah. you know, you can wait till next summer to, to make that decision, right. which is good. Exactly. All right. Well, we will talk a little bit more about Dev Camp with some of the post skate interviews, as well as kick off our free agency discussion coming up next. But first, I want to talk to you about the Coconut Brownie Chunk Built Bar, because that is one of Built Bar's new flavors, and it is so good, especially now that they've given it the Puffs treatment. That's right, Coconut Brownie Chunk Built Bar's flavor you love in a deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. But it's also good for you. It's low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and all delicious. It's the perfect treat when you've got a craving, you, you have a sweet tooth, or if you just want a quick healthy snack. They are an excellent source of protein as well. And they're made with collagen protein, with your, which your body absorbs more efficiently. It provides tons of health benefits. You can eat something good and is good for you. But Coconut Brownie Chunk Puffs are only here for a limited time. So go to Built.com now to make sure you don't miss out. Delicious coconut, rich, sweet brownie, creamy marshmallow. Get to Built.com to order your box of Coconut Brownie Chunk Built Puffs right now. You can use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 at Built.com. So as is usually the case, they have a, a few of the players available to the media after the skate in development camp. And we got to hear from, I think, obviously, they wanted us to hear from Cutter Gautier right away because he's the number five overall pick from this year. Uh, I was more interested in what Tyson Forster had to say, mm -hmm. especially because he was coming back from the injury. And Man, the way he talked about how it happened, it was just like complete dumb luck. Yeah. So he thinks he's uh, getting better on his skating so far, which is interesting that you note that he did not. He seems to think that he has, um, but that he's definitely getting stronger with the shoulder and that um, he's just really kind of focused on the fall and doing the work now to get to where he needs to be, which I suppose is like what you have to say, but... No, no, his stick, time... handling, his stick handling looked good. And mm. I was specifically watching how his shoulders sort of reacted and reacted well. That's good to hear then, um, because he does feel like he's headed in the right direction. I think and, he is. And that his recovery has been going well and they've been working on the right things at the right time as, as part of that process. So, so that was really good to hear from him and that, um, the other interesting part of it was Mike O'Connell, who is in charge of player development, um, who was kind of out there as the head coach of Dev Camp this time around. And I thought he had some interesting things to say about Samu Tuamala. Man, Mike has like 
hockey speak down pat oh, it yeah. was like essentially he said nice kid tries hard loves the game <laughs> i was just like oh my god like, but here's what i don't get knowing what happened last year why is he going back to finland it's a it's a good question uh, and i think that they're kind of trying to write off last season and give him a reset in order to rebuild his confidence that was the impression i got from the way that mike was talking about it and that maybe they feel like if he's home he'll be able to do that there but that he has to sort of prove himself to that team solidify his position there and earn the ice time and so i think it's a combination of we want you to do this at at home, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of eyes on you, and you have to step up. I'd prefer for him to come play junior hockey, honestly. Well, that is not what they are doing. So, no. <laughs> uh, with Cutter Gautier, I think he kind of continued what he was saying on draft night. Um, mentioned that he liked watching Mark. Shifley, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and Austin Matthews as kind of on-ice role models and style of play. This kid is so bound and determined to play center. It's, uh, I mean, I think it's encouraging because obviously that's what the Flyers want from him. But um, the way that Mike was talking about him and the way he talked, I I do think it's going to be a bit of a road for him to get there. Yeah, Mike told the truth. Exactly. Mike and did not he, sugarcoat it. He did not. And and that he'll have to work really hard at BC. Um, and if the coaches at BC don't see it, they're not going to let him play center. Right. And that's just kind of the way it works. Right. Yep. So this will be something to absolutely follow in college hockey this upcoming season. Definitely keep track of his ice time and, and position play uh, this upcoming season there. All right, with free agency, Russ. So this is a really, I think, interesting, and I'm using the word interesting very delicately (laughs) to talk about the Flyers and free agency this year. Because as we know, the Flyers have little to no cap space to work with. They have a lot of needs. And they have a distinct inability to clear the cap space to do any of it. But so I think there's just this confluence of unfortunate circumstances that Chuck Fletcher, to some degree, has created on his own to get so you're there. Saying it's a limity snickets of sorts. A little bit. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. But I think that, you know, if you're talking about the team needs and what they could possibly get through free agency. I just don't know what's out there that the Flyers can afford. But what do you think are their top priorities? I think now you have to get a backup goalie. So whether that's an Alex Stalock type, really whoever's – that one they'll wait on because whoever's sort of without a job, they'll go up to him and say, you want to come here for the minimum? <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of how that's going to work. Yeah, I I see them kind of going the same route they did with Martin Jones almost. It's kind of waiting until the end and seeing who's left and seeing how little they can pay him. So, But here's here's the crux of the Johnny Goudreau stuff. So, um, Well, let's let's talk about the other needs, though. Like, is there any other, like, key position on this team that you think they're going to try and fill? They do need a playmaker. They don't have, you know, they have one playmaker on the team in Travis Konechny. And not a lot of other playmakers. So Yeah, I, I think that's a big part of the problem is that no matter what they want to do this upcoming season, and John Tortorella can only do so much with what he's been given, and they don't have enough playmakers. And people are going to have to turn themselves into playmakers who don't do that naturally. And I think that's going to be a real struggle. And I just don't see where they have cap space t- to fill that need. What are you worried about cap space for? That's listen, the, the, the lightning don't. But I'm just saying. So here's where we're at with Goudreau, though, because I was listening to my buddies at SiriusXM today, and he definitely was offered nine and a half by eight with mm-hmm. Calgary, who's also willing to go up from that. So I think the Flyers would have to be crazy to pay Johnny Goudreau ten million, not because Johnny's not a great player, because they don't have the ten million to do it. 
but they still might find a way. So, so that's a little bit of a, a thing there. That's something to watch out for. You know, another player who's out there um, who I don't believe is re-signing, Nino Niederreiter. Um, now, he's, is he really a playmaker? Eh, not really, but he is a rough-and-tumble guy who gets points, and that would fit the Flyers' profile. Kind of wonder if they would look at Nino Niederreiter. Yeah, I, I suppose that's possible. I think that, um, you know, Goudreau, like you said, is probably off the table. I mean, not impossible, but most likely off the table. I think Nazem Kadri is kind of off the table as well because of cap space and term. Um, obviously, Philip Forsberg is off the table because he signed with Nashville. Uh, so I think as far as like the big shiny names in free agency. I just don't see any of that as being realistic for the Flyers. No. Um, if they are looking for another scorer that's not too expensive, uh, Frank Vetrano, he was really good for a short time with the Rangers. Right. You know, that they, they're still going to need some other goal. I just think the Rangers might want to re-sign him. They might. But, I mean, you know, I'm just saying the Flyers have to look at all these kinds of guys because yeah i'd rather get two guys than just get johnny goudreau because they need bodies exactly well we will talk about some more of those potential names coming up next okay so one of the interesting names that's out there and we've talked about this a couple of times but Man, would I absolutely love to see a revenge signing of Evgeny Malkin in Philadelphia. <laughs> I just, I think it'll cost less than those other guys. And maybe you can outspend the pens on this and, and just do it. I, I think it would be incredible, especially because you know, everything is a crapshoot and Chuck seems to be spending money on weird things out of nowhere. I bet he could make it work. And it seems like the way the politics of it is happening right now between Malkin and Ron Hextall, it would just be the perfect thing. Sure. Um, the only issue is I just think he's going to go to Washington if he doesn't stay in Pittsburgh. I don't think, think that would play. be a better revenge tour in Washington than it, it would be. It would be in just Philly. as good, if not better. Yeah. I mean, I, just, I can see it. That's my gut. Um, you know, if the if the Flyers had a you know want to spend a little bit, you know, Vincent Trocheck's still only twenty nine. He's a really good center, mm -hmm. fifty one points. I still think uh, Trocheck's a a heck of a good player. If you want to spend a little more than than a Nita Ryder. Um, you know, if you wanted to get a veteran cheap who is from Minnesota, who used to score goals, Phil Kessel, if you want to get him on a cheap one-year deal, maybe you try it. You know, I don't hate that idea if it's a one-year deal. Having another kind of veteran to sort of hang out with the other older guys. And, you know, I, I, Phil Kessel just likes to go out there and score goals. So I'm not going to complain about that either. Um, and would certainly fill a slot in the lineup that uh, obviously we're dealing with a lot of the younger kids right now. And so it would add some more experience into the lineup. So I don't hate it. I, it just doesn't sound exactly like something Chuck Fletcher would do. Like he's, he's, it seems like he wants to get guys who are going to be in Philadelphia for more of the long haul. I think he he'll do that sort of short term deal with depth defensemen, mm. but um, I'm not sure it's the kind of deal that Chuck Fletcher is prone to to making. But I, like I said, I don't hate it at all. Yeah, I'm looking also if you wanted to get somebody with that 25 or or under kind of thing. Uh, Colin White's 25. Mm -hmm. He had you know he's had a history of injuries, but he's a good player. I mean. I think he's still a guy that we've not seen his best hockey. And again, um, I think they would like him there. He won't cost you a lot. He really won't. And at the end of the day, he might be able to get you 30 points, 35 points. I mean, I would, and again, you could sign up for like three years where you're going through this transition. And if he does get it back together, 
that's good. But I mean, he he plays defense. He does all the things Torch would like. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you go back to nineteen, is when he had forty one points. Like that was his best year. That's what he's capable of. Uh, the other interesting thing that is happening as the Flyers have declined Matt Strom a qualifying offer, all three Strom brothers are now yeah. going to free agency, which is absolutely wild. And part of me thinks, oh, maybe they should, you know, at least Dylan and Ryan could maybe swing something to play together. But I do think Dylan Strom could be an affordable option for the Flyers. He would be. Um, I did suggest somewhere else that maybe if Ryan Strom takes his price down, Dylan and Ryan could go to the Rangers because they actually could use both of them. Yeah. Um, the Flyers should call him, though. I think that's yeah, that's legit. I'll give you another guy, too, who's on the trade block, Connor Brown. Connor Brown, uh, I watched him play in Erie with Connor McDavid. Really good goal scorer, fast. He um, he's six foot, so he would fill the quota, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And also, like last year on Ottawa, ten goals, thirty nine points. So you would get like Scott Lawton type production. Not bad. Yeah. And, and he would add to add speed to the lineup. You'd have to trade for him with Ottawa, right. but right, but that's where you could do the Konechny trade and maybe get something else in return as well. Well, and that's one of the things we talked about when we did our conversation with Ross uh, of Locked on Sens. Uh, that was one of the options we put out there. And I, I do still think it's a good one. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I just, beyond all of these sort of more depth forwards or, you know, third liner kind of levels, I just don't see many options out there for the Flyers, especially, like you said, because they're going to have to to sign a backup goalie at this point, and and that's going to take some cap space as well. Well, if they got Trocek, it would turn Kevin Hayes into a third liner, which I'm not against. I don't care what he's making. Like, Vinny right. Trocek's just a better second center, and it would really make them a lot better. But, you know, that's a pipe dream. If they got Nita Ryder, he would challenge to be on the second line for sure. He would. I, I agree with that. And I, I also don't mind pushing Kevin Hayes down to the third line. I no. think if you can have a solid third line, that's more than they've had recently, yep. honestly. So having a guy like Kevin Hayes on the third line, I, I got no problem with that at all. Especially maybe if you put Lindblom out there with him, I, I think that would that be That would be fine. I mean, if you're taking fine, Lindblom yeah. off the second line, but he's with Hayes, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, lots of good options that we've talked about. Uh, we will continue this conversation tomorrow as free agency is about to begin. Uh, wrapping up with our Flyers fun thing, uh, continuing to honor Zach Hill of the Flyers PR department. The Wells Fargo Center announced that they are going to name the press conference room when they uh, redecorate or reconstruct on that main event level. They're going to name it the Zach Hill Media Center, which is such a great thing for them to do as as uh, Zach is headed into retirement from the Flyers. No, it's great. And just to give you an idea of where I was at the draft, I was right. Like I could see the Flyers table as I was broadcasting. And so Zach took a couple of pictures of me. He sent them to me, you know. And I had a free minute when um, Devin Kaplan got picked. So I, when I knew the Flyers were on the board, I'm like, all right, let me go back to that vantage point and get like a behind the scenes video. And I did. And I got Zach, you know, bringing Devin up to the stage. And so I sent that video to him. I was like, hey, I got to pay you back because you're giving me all these nice photos. And he's done that over the years a million times. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like it was, I, I needed to do that for him. That's very sweet. I love that. All right. That will do it for today's show. We'll be back again tomorrow with more notes from development camp. We'll have our mailbag, like I said, so get those 
questions in, you can email us at lockedonflyers at gmail.com. You can tweet us at lockedonflyers. You can comment over on YouTube and we will get to them. I am Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your next listen Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world with Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Have a great day, everyone.